Writing text in the terminal might make you look like a caveman, but until Elon Musk releases his Neuralink to actual people, it's still the fastest way of interacting with your computer. Developers love working with CLI apps, but user input is an awkward mess of bytes, so nobody wants to make them. Meet Typer, a Python library that allows you to define terminal commands with a single Python function. Let me show you how to get started and how you can create your own rock solid CLI apps with Typer. What I've got here is a very bare bones poetry project. It only has a PyProject's TOML file and this smart car module with an init.py file within. I'm going to install Typer using poetry add, and I'm gonna specifically use the typer all option to include the rich library, which helps you create nice terminal output with colors and tables if you like. First, I'm going to import typer and then create a typer.typer instance called app. I'm gonna give it a funky name and then I'll do the standard if name equals main guard clause and call the app object directly like a function. This is how you initialize your CLI in typer. Now I'm going to run this main.py file from the terminal and you'll see that it breaks because we haven't specified a command for our app. So let's add our first command. We're first gonna add this drive command. You can see that I'm defining this using the at app dot command decorator like so on the function i'm going to directly import print from rich so that every time we use print it uses the rich version rather than the python version and all i'm going to do initially is use rich dot print to print to standard out i'm also going to add a little bit of color to this message here by using the square bracket syntax that you can find in the rich documentation now you'll see that if i run the command we'll get the message going on an emission free drive in green note that we haven't had to specify a sub command yet so we haven't had to do main.py drive just main.py note that i can now do main.py dash dash help to get an overview of the cli app that we've written you can also see that typer includes shell completion with these two flags here if you install these when you use the app you'll get auto completion when you're working with it this is a really nice feature that typer includes that'd be a lot of hassle to set up yourself which is really really nice and saves you a lot of work especially if you were using something like Python's argpass module. Okay, this is great. So let's add our second command. We've got our car driving, so let's add stop. Again, we'll use app.command, and you can see I'm defining it exactly the same as the first. I'm just doing a rich.print in red that says stopping the car. Not how easy it is to just add a new command here. It's just defining another decorated function, and that's it. And now, if I run the main.py script, you'll see that it tells me that I'm missing a command. Because we have two commands now, we have to specify which one we want to run. So, I can run main.py stop, and it'll print stopping the car in red. If I now want the car to drive, I have to do main.py drive. Now, if we go back to our dash dash help flag, you'll see that it shows both the drive and the stop commands right there for us and shows that neither of them need any arguments yet. However, at this point, it's becoming quite annoying to do main.py all the time. Since we're using poetry, we can define this tool.poetry.scripts section in the PyProject TOML. Now we can create an alias from smartcar.main colon app to the keyword car. This points directly at the app object in the main module and we'll call it when we run car. Now all I have to do is run poetry install and you'll see that instead of having to do python main.py drive I can just do car drive and get the exact same output. Car stop works exactly the same. But what if we only want to drive a certain distance and we want to pass in a miles argument to our drive command? Well we can do that very easily by purely adding this miles argument to the function itself. With typer, we actually have to include type hints for the argument, otherwise the command won't work. This is because typer relies on these type hints to know what kind of argument to expect, and it also means you don't have to do any type checking yourself. So, since we want this miles argument to be an integer, all we have to do is add the int type hint here, and typer will take care of the rest. Now, I'm just going to change this print statement to say, going on a number of miles, miles emission free drive, and you can see that if I run car drive 10, it says going on a 10 mile emission free drive. However, if I use the string 10 instead of the number, you'll see that this actually fails. This is because as typo is expecting an integer and not a string, and we've provided a string. Well, what if I want to specify a direction to drive? Well, that's really easy. I can add a direction argument to this function, give it a string type, and then put that in the print. You can see now that if I run the drive command, I need both of these options. So I'd have to do car drive 10 north to drive 10 miles north. If I leave one of them out, it doesn't work. If I run car drive dash dash help, you'll see that we now need to specify both arguments and it will tell you the type as well. However, what happens if we specify a default direction? Well, if we set direction to have a default value of north, it means that I can now just do car drive 10 and it will drive 10 miles north. However, if I do car drive 10 
west, you'll now see that this doesn't work. That's because Typer has changed direction from a CLI argument to a CLI option, and CLI options in command line programs generally need a flag to specify them. So if we look at the car drive dash dash help, you'll see that it's now expecting us to use dash dash direction to specify the direction. So you can see if I do car drive 10 dash dash direction west, that now works as expected. However, typing dash dash direction every time is very long. So what if we just wanted dash D? Well, we can use what's called an option object in typer. So if we specify that our default for direction is a typer.option, we can then add north as our default value and specify any aliases we would like in the rest of the arguments. So I will add dash dash direction here, but I will also add dash D. And you can now see that I can do car drive 10 dash D west to drive 10 miles west. If I show this with the help method, you'll see that both direction and dash D are included in the help tech. Now, typer.option is a very, very powerful tool because you can use it to prompt the user for input. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create an unlock method to unlock our smart car. For this unlock command, I'm just going to have a dictionary of users and their passwords and all it's going to do is check that the username exists in the dictionary and that the password is correct. If it isn't, we're going to raise a typer.exit, which is a special exception that allows you to exit from the CLI with a certain return code. This is really handy if you want your CLI to be used in CICD pipelines and want the job to fail if a certain condition is met. So in this case, if the user doesn't log in, we will raise a typer.exit with a code of one. And if the username and password is correct, we will unlock the car for them. It's going to take a username and a password, and both are going to be strings. They'll default to a typer.option and then I'll use an ellipsis as the first argument to tell typer that we don't actually want this to be an optional value and it needs to have a default. If you use the prompt equals true keyword, typer will then ask the user for the username or password. So if I now run car unlock, it will ask me for a username and it will ask me for a password. Or I can run car unlock with dash dash username or dash dash password to not be prompted for one of them. However, having a password in this terminal can be a little bit insecure. Thankfully, the typer option has a keyword argument for hide input. If we set this to true and now run car unlock, you will see that when we have to input our password, the input won't go into the CLI terminal and therefore won't be in the history which is far more secure. However, this isn't as far as you can go with Python type hints in Typer. Typer really does have superpowers. For example, with our drive command, if we want to restrict our users to only driving in one of the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, what we can do is we can define a direction enum using the new Python 3.11 string enum. You can see that we have north, south, east, and west specified as enum options. And now if I set the type for our direction argument to a direction enum and then set the default value in the typer option to direction.north, typer will now know that we can only specify north, south, east or west for our enums. So if I now run car drive dash d north, it still works. Same with south. However, if I put car drive 10 dash d forward, you'll see that it no longer works and typer tells us that the input has to be one of north, south, east or west. The same shows up if I show the help text for the car drive command. But what if you want to be able to run some code for every single command, but don't want to have to duplicate code everywhere? Well, typer allows you to have what's called a callback, which is a function that will run on every single command before the command runs. What we can do is we can check that a user has a smart car key before getting into our car. We can add an app.callback decorator on this check for key function. And what we're going to do is check that the user's environment has the smart car key variable and that it's equal to this super secure key. If it's not equal, we're going to print out a warning and raise the typer.exit code we used earlier. If it is equal, nothing will happen and this code will just pass. So now you can see if I run car drive 10 and the environment variable isn't present, we are not allowed to drive the car. However, if I define the environment variable beforehand and then run the command, everything works as expected. I'm going to add this to my environment for the rest of the session so I don't have to type it in each time, but you can assume it's there. Lastly, what if we wanted to manage our users with more commands? So say we wanted to do car users add or car users remove to add or remove users. Currently, we'd have to define a users command with an action argument, which could be an enum, and then we'd have to do different logic depending on what the value of that enum was, which would lead to complicated branching code and could become very messy very quickly. Thankfully, Typer has functionality for what are called subcommands. So we can define car users, and then we can define the subcommands such as add or list, just as we've defined every other command so far, with a decorator and a function. In order to do this, I'm going to create a new users.py file. In this users.py file, I'm going to add our users dictionary from earlier and remove it from the main.py file. 
and I'm going to create a new typer.typer .typer object called app. I'm then going to go back into our main.py file and use app.addTyper to add our users typer instance as a subcommand. We're going to add two commands to this app instance. The first command will be add, which will take a username and a password. Again, we'll use the typer dot option here so that we get prompted and don't have to pass the password in via the CLI. All this is going to do in this case is add the user to the dictionary and print out the dictionary. However, in a real use case, you'd add your user to a database and hash the password and so on. We can also add a list command which will list all the users under a nice yellow heading. However, we can't use the name list as it's a built-in keyword in Python, and this would override it, which could cause unintended behavior further down the line. Thankfully, Typer allows you to pass in a string to the app.command decorator to name your command. This means we can name our function list with an underscore, but pass the string list into the decorator to call the command users list. I'm also going to replace our dictionary printing in the add command with a call to list. Since Typer commands are just functions, you can call them from other commands, as I'm doing here. Now, if I do car users list, you can see our users. And if I do car users add with a new user and password, you can see that that user also gets added and the same listing is used. So that's gonna be it for a very brief overview into Typer. As you can see, it's incredibly useful and very, very powerful. There are so many features here that I haven't covered and I highly recommend you go and read the docs. They're very, very well written and beautifully designed. I hope this has been useful for you and that it helps you evolve your little caveman brain. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe and why not check out this other video here where I talk about the differences between object-oriented programming and functional programming in Python and what the best method to use is. Spoiler, it's neither.